What's up everybody? Welcome back to another day in Car Mechanic Simulator with me, the Virtual Mechanic, and today's project, a Jeep Wrangler. Now this car isn't actually available in the game in on Steam Workshop or anything like that. The only way to get this one is to head over to patreon.com forward slash deadbob777 and sign up at the £5 a month stage. Uh, which is the garage monkey level and you get access to the beautiful jeep wrangler also a lovely lovely fire truck and a go-kart on there as well three different mods that you can't get anywhere else Payne has been nice enough to let me have this beautiful jeep wrangler and also the fire truck which we'll be covering a later episode but today we're going to work on this jeep wrangler so if you want this one the only way to get it to get it is to head over to patreon.com forward slash deadbob777 and sign up at the Garage Monkey tier and you too can play with this Jeep Wrangler. This is the Jurassic Park guest transport. Let's just have a look. Jurassic Park guest transport there on the Jeep Wrangler. 240,000 kilometers around that little dinosaur island. Very bad condition. It's definitely been attacked by a few dinos along the way. It does have in it the I6 overhead valve. We can swap it to a V8. But I'm not going to. I'm going to play with this little i6 today. Not played one before. Only 181 horsepower. So we're not expecting anything massively impressive out of this when it comes to power or performance. But it's going to be fun nonetheless. We did also get just about a good deal. I bought it for 6,178 and could sell it for 6,333, making a profit of 155. Not a too bad. Profit is a profit. It's looking very sorry for itself. We're missing a whole front end there. We're missing all of the interior and probably a roll cage of some description as well. There is a lot going on with this one. It looks pretty terrible, but let's get this one started. Let's get it over to the car wash. Let's get this one cleaned up. Here we are then in the car wash with Payne's Jeep Wrangler. Let's get it all cleaned and see which livery we've got on this one. I can already see it has got a livery. It just depends which one. There's the Jurassic Park logo looking awesome. Now these are numbered and they are numbered to go with some specific plates that French Toast has added on the normal Steam Workshop. So if you do get it, anybody can have access to the plate pack as well. I will include a link to that in the description, along with the link to go and get this on the Patreon. Let's get the interior done. Let's get this one back on the lift and then get that engine ripped out and everything else stripped down. That's the Jeep up in the air. Let's check for that oil pan. It is there, nice and blue sticking out. Let's get the oil drain over and get all of that drained out of there. Quite a lot of kilometers, so it's probably... I've definitely seen a lot worse. I was going to say it's really bad, but I've definitely seen a lot worse. There just wasn't a lot of it. Let's get in underneath, see what we've got going on here. Let's start off by getting this drive shaft out of here. Out you come, nice and easy. One rusty bolt, not too bad at all. Out you go. See you later. And then what have we got? The starter just here, nice and easy. And then a big old gearbox to come out as well with a few rusty bolts on this one. Not too bad. Let's just get these out. Out you come. Out the way. Get out of my way. There we go. All of that out as well. And we'll grab this front exhaust section just to be on the safe side. Uh, no, we'll leave the front drive shaft there. That'll be fine. We'll grab that in a bit. Let's get it back down. And let's get that engine ripped out of there. Over you go. Don't need to open the hood because there's no front end. Let's just get you out. Nice and simple. Thank you for coming out easy. And let's see what we've got in here then. So we've got the big old radiator there. Power steering reservoir, the air filter with all the clips, my favorite, wishy-washy reservoir, ABS pump and module, the brake servo, a big old battery and the fuse box. Let's just get the lid off the fuse box there. Up here, which is in the dashboard, we have the ECU. I'm going to grab that out while we're here and we'll grab that fuel pump from here because we can reach it nice and easy. Sweet. What have we got then? So we've got liquids to drain out. We've got one, two, three and four. I think that's it. Let's just check there's nothing missing. No, there's nothing missing. That's always a good sign. So four liquids to drain. We all know the drill, although I've been getting it wrong since this channel started. So just right click, additional tools, drain tool. You don't have to click on the lid. You can just click on the container. Here we go. Thank you for that French toast. And I'll be back in just a moment. There we go. That's all the liquids drained. You only need the lid if you're filling them back up towards the end. But let's get all of this out. Out with the radiator, out with the wishy-washy reservoir, the brake servo. Power steering reservoir. No, I don't want to fill it up. The power steering reservoir. Clicking on the lid. Get that battery out. Remember to throw that one on charge in a bit. Let's grab the ABS pump and module. Out you come. And out you come there. And then we'll grab this air filter. And we'll see what we've got going on on the suspension. It looks very funky from up here, but we'll check it out properly 
in just a moment. Oh, I did get it. That was lucky. I thought I was going to miss there. Let's get you all out of here. And then let's nip down and get this front wheel off. Already in red. They're definitely going to be going back in red. I couldn't see that one was rusted. Don't know what happened there. Let's just move on. So we've got disc brakes. That is a good sign. And this is the leaf spring front suspension. It is four wheel drive because we've got that drive shaft going on through there. We do have all of the U-bolts, the plate underneath, both rubber bushings on this side, uh, along with the inner and outer tie rod and the suspension that's set up there. And the back plate on these. Got to check that back plate there. These ones do come with them. On this other side, we've got both the U-bolts, the underplate, the bushings. They are there. The shock, the inner and outer tie rod and the back plate on this as well. Fantastic. Let's jump down the back, get this wheel off and see what we've got going on with these leaf springs down the back here. And that one rusty bolt. I didn't miss it this time. Out you come. There we go. It is drum brakes, not discs. That's a bit of a shame. But we do have both the U-bolts and the plate underneath, along with both the bushings on this side and the knuckle housing. This doesn't have the back plate, same as the front does. Let's go over to the other side. Both the U-bolts, the plate, the shock, and both of the rubber bushings. That is all there. Absolutely fantastic. Let's jump back up the front. I need to get all of these fuses out. So we'll get all of these out. I'm going to clear all of the suspension. And then I'll get the engine stripped down before we come back and sort the body out on this beautiful Jeep Wrangler. That's everything repaired, replaced or upgraded, ready to go back on the beautiful little Jeep Wrangler. But we need to sort this uh, bodywork or what little bodywork there is left out. So let's just start tearing all of this off. Now with that front bumper, uh, that's a door window apparently. There, It works, we'll call it that. That's fine, out with the door there. That's the mirror as well. Anything along here? Tail light out you come, trunk off you come, and the other tail light there. Is that a part? That is a part. That's the fender on that side. Fair enough. What else have we got here? Not a lot, not a lot. There's the door, and that looks like it could be it. Let's just grab what's left of this interior out. Just that steering wheel out we come, and there we go. I will replace it with that one because it looks quite good. Uh, I'm not sure what to do with the seats yet. We'll see what comes with it. We'll find out that in a minute. Is that everything out, though? Let's have a look. That's not the right screen. There we go. 1%. That's a good start. And that is everything out. Fantastic. Let's go. And oh, the wrong way. Let's go and grab that welder. Bring it over. Now, I bought it for 6,178. And well, as we can see on this screen, 20%. So I'm going to say 1250. 500. Way off. But never mind. Let's have a look in the shop for this one today. Jeep Wrangler. We've got lots of parts. Only three pages, but there's not many parts on the vehicle few different front bumper options. I did quite like the winchy light one there, but we'll see what we come up with. One front end, uh, one, two, three different doors, should I say, open, and then with some canvas parts on it. A few different fender options, enough to play around with, and more fender options for the other side. Hood and hood with the uh, eggs. What do you even call that piece? Snorkel. There we go. <laughs> the hood with the snorkel and the hood without the snorkel. Uh, the headlights, different mirrors. A couple of different taillight options there. One rear bumper, a few clamshells, a few of the rear doors there. Oh, that's the windscreen part, isn't it? Yeah, I remember now. Then we've got fender options, one with the um, aerial there, which we probably will be putting back on. I quite like that one. Uh, more fenders, more mirrors, a couple of windshields, and then that's it. Trunk with the wheel or without the wheel. Not too bad. Quite liking them options. I've got to get this one back together, though. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with mine, how I'm going to play it off. And then we'll head over to the paint shop and check out the wonderful French toast liveries for this one today. There might be quite a few. Let's get the little Jurassic Park guest transport wrangler all back together before we head over to the paint shop. I'm going to start with the interior. Now, I have coloured these. I don't know how well it's going to work. You can see they are a dark brown, but they do come out a little bit lighter inside. I'm hoping that matches. Let's just throw that steering wheel back in as well. I'm saying hoping that matches. If you've watched the film, uh, the intro Jeep, uh, it's got a bit of tanning on the inside of the seat. There it is a black seat uh, with a bit of tan on it. So I've just tried to add that bit of tan. We'll see if it works a little bit later on. But let's get all of this back together. We'll start with the hood. I went with the hood without the snorkel because of the Jeep. Look, I'm going for doesn't have a snorkel. The front end, there is only one. So we'll just get that in along with the headlights. There we go. I did keep the original front bumper with the winch and the two lights. It looked pretty awesome. That was definitely the look I was going for. Front fender with the antenna. Jeep logo paintable. That's what we want on there. No antenna on this side. Just a mirrored image without the antenna there. Looking pretty sweet. The rear left door or the 
windshield surround i don't know on the you go there and then we've got the rear right fender with the big old antenna radio coming up around and then on the other side we've got the same piece but without it on with the doors we don't want any roof on this one this is the open door jeep from the very beginning of the film the first film of course let's just get these lights on they are as they are there are two different options the ones with the sticky uppy bits were the ones i wanted and the one with the wheel on you go there on with the rear bumper looking awesome and then we've got the beautiful framework there let's just get the mirrors on get this one all finished off ready to go we've definitely got that one with the little lanyard bit hanging down there we shall see what happens later on now i'm not picking the plates until after i've picked the livery because the liveries are numbered and so are the plates so that is it all we can do for now that is what i wanted to do that should say less than because we've still got two plates to go on but that should be everything i believe it's everything i believe we're just missing the license plates but let's head over to the paint shop and check out the liveries for this beautiful jurassic park jeep here we are then in the paint shop with a beautiful Jeep Wrangler. I'm loving the liveries that come with this one. They are all numbered. So you see here you've got the 00 on there and it pits the 00 on the lanyard as well. If I just move it over one or a couple, you can see it changes the number on there. Looking absolutely fantastic. There is a couple more to show you. These go all the way up to number 30. I don't know why I didn't go the other way, but I didn't. So we're going to roll with it. We're just going to get up there really quickly because there is one more awesome livery I do want to show you. 28, 29, 30. So that's all the numbered Jeeps from Jurassic Park. And then we've got one more from Jurassic World. Here it is, the Jeep number 29, which is actually the first Jeep you actually see in the first film as well. Jeep number 29 is the first one you see. It's the one that John Hammond gets in at the beginning of, well, not the beginning, but near the beginning of the very first film. And then it's also in Jurassic World, looking a bit sorry for itself a little bit later on. Slot number 33, you do have a template if you want to create your own livery. But the livery number I'm going with today is number 18. And the reason I'm going for number 18 is because it is the second Jeep that you see in the film. The one that's actually in the front of uh, John Hammond's one. And it's the one that, that transports, if I can just get to the right livery, there we go, is the one that transports Ellie Sadler and Alan Grant on their first expedition on the island. Absolutely fantastic. That's what I'm going with. We've got the lanyard that matches the number 18 there. Let's get you on and covered. I've taken the seats out uh, because if you paint the body with paintable seats, it will paint the seats as well. And I wanted to keep the brown on there. Let's just get some license plates on. Here we go. There we go. Number 18 plate at the front and number 18 plate at the back there. So now this all matches up. Lanyard plate and the livery on there. And we'll just quickly throw some seats back in as well. Hopefully they stuck with the same colour. On you go and on you go. They're not quite a perfect match as you can see. It's a little bit different. But it's the closest, as, as close as I could get it, sadly, with that. Looking pretty awesome for the engine. I think we're going to keep a lot of this body coloured with a few bits of black and red on there just to give it some accents, make it look awesome. For the suspension, maybe black and body colour with the odd splash of red. Not too much red underneath, though, as much as everyone liked it last time. Pun intended. That's what I'm going to go for. Hopefully this is going to look awesome. So I need to get some bits painted. Let's get this back on the lift and then start getting everything back together. Hopefully this Jurassic Park Jeep is going to look incredible. That's everything painted and no shocks to put back together today. So let's just jump straight back in and start getting this one going. Start with the steering rack. In you go. You are in a body color looking lovely. And the front drive axle is in a black there looking awesome. We got the front steering knuckle also in a black. And then we got the outer inner tie rod, sorry, in a black and the outer tie rod in a body color there looking awesome. Leaf spring underneath in a body color. And then the front shock absorber is in that red. Hopefully, we're going to get a match a bit more of that red. Nothing too special. Let's just get these rubber bushings. In you go. And in you go over on this side as well. There we go. And then we've got the wheel hub. And that is in a body color. Looking pretty smart. And then the back plate for this knuckle. Also in a body color. Just help separate it up a little bit. Looking pretty sweet. We'll move over here. Leaf spring plate is in the black. And then the two U-bolts are both in the red there. Looking pretty awesome. Tying it all together, throwing a splash of that colour in here as well. The front drive axle also in a black there, looking good. And then we've got the brake discs on the front with the brake pads and the brake calipers. They are in a black because we've got red wheels going on this one today. For definite red wheels on this one today. That is looking awesome. Very pleased with that. So let's crack on and let's move down the back. 
that's the fuel tank. Well, we might as well throw that one in as we're here and get that pump in as well. Let's move down a little bit. The leaf spring a rear drive axle in the black there looking pretty sweet. Uh, then we've got the knuckle housing in a black and the hub in a body color there. We'll crack on with the rest of that in a minute. Leaf spring in a body color, shock in a red. We've already seen that looking pretty sweet. Let's just get these bushings in. One there and one over here. In you go. In you go. And then the leaf spring plates and the bolts are the same as at the front. Black plate, red bolts. If I could click on them, in they go. On you go and on you go there. Looking fantastic. Love that. Drive axle in the black. This one needs bolting up, though. And then we've got a drum brake cylinder. Brake shoes. On we go. And then the actual brake drum itself, which is in a black to go with the black calipers. Red wheels. We know the drill by now. Looking pretty sweet. I'm quite pleased with that. A lot of black down here. Not too much body color. Maybe I should have made that knuckle body color, but we'll go with it. It's looking pretty good. While we are down here, though, I'm going to swing around to this side before we fill in the other piece. Let's get all this exhaust in. It is all in black. And it is looking pretty awesome. I'm going to put the front exhaust section in, but we will take it back out before we drop the engine in. Just so you can see it looking good there. Oh, and we've also got this little drive axle or drive shaft coming down here. Doesn't connect to anything, but we've done that one in a body color. But for some reason, this only goes with a chrome metallic -y body color. So it is slightly different. But we're going to leave it because the main drive shaft is in the same color. Pretty sweet. Quite pleased with that. We're going to get the other side all finished off. That is the engine block. Let's try down the back. I'm going to get this side all finished off and we'll move on to that engine bay before we move in to building that beautiful inline six engine. That black, red and body color. I'll be honest, I'm just going to call this body color because I don't even know what color to call this. It's kind of like a tanny, gray, yellowy, orangey, beigey thing, but not any of them colors all at the same time. I don't know. So we're just going to call it body color from now on. Black, red and body color looking pretty sweet. I think it looks epic. But let's jump up and let's get this engine bay all sorted out. We start by throwing the battery in because it's there and we'll get that ECU because it doesn't get coloured anyway. Fuse box today, we've done that one in a red. Hopefully it's going to look awesome when compared to everything else. Brake servo in you go, wishy-washy reservoir in you go and power steering reservoir in you go. Up here we've got the ABS pump and the module. I've done both of these in a black. Might seem a bit weird, but hopefully it's going to look good when we throw the engine in a little bit later on. We shall see. Air filter base in a black. Seems a bit boring, I know, but we're rocking with it. Hopefully, again, it's going to look sweet. We do have some shiny little red clips on here, though, just to make it pop just that little bit more. On we go, on we go. And then the last piece before I finish off that fuse box is this big old radiator C I have done you in a red. You do come out chrome red for the quality of life mod, but I don't care. It looks pretty insane and you can see it through the grill not too badly it's just there a little bit of red just to show it is there looking pretty sweet and you can see fuse box in red there and then everything else pretty much black out looking pretty sweet with some red clips and a crack on i'm going to finish this fuse box then we're going to go build that beautiful i6 motor i'll see you in just a minute there she is then the engine block and oil pan are both in that body color tan beige whatever you want to call it looking pretty sweet quite pleased with that let's crack on down here so we've got an arm here i've done this arm in a black in fact the two arms on this one i have done both of them in black i think they look pretty good quite pleased with them camshaft is inside the block you can put it in from underneath but i thought i'd save you the effort and i'd show you it up here in we go there looking pretty sweet then we've got a cam gear on top of that and a timing chain here somewhere there it is on you go and on you go with the timing cover which i have done in black didn't want to keep any of this one blue keeping mostly the black and tan with a few red splashes going on there. Speaking of red splashes, the alternator there is in a red. Might be too much for some, I know, but I love it. Power steering pump also in a red just to show off. And then the water pump also in a red there. That's the three big splashes of red on the front. Then we've got a wall pump pulley just in a black there. The crankshaft pulley also in a black. And then it should be two timing belts. 17 belts if i could click on them what's happening there we go black them both out just to give them a bit more depth can't really see the writing on them as much you can still see it but not as much the radiator fan in you go in the black so that's the front end of this all finished black red and that body colored whatever color we want to call it let's move on around ignition coil didn't paint it left it in there it's got black and red on it it looks awesome a fuel pump painted black but kept the red pretty sweet on we go there and uh, then we've got the oil filter also in red just to accentuate off the side there. Pretty sweet. Distributor, main parts in a black. 
the rotor's not been painted and then the cap is in a body color with beautiful little red clips one there and one there just to sort of splash it out a bit more quite like that i think that's looking sweet so far let's move on around we'll just throw this fuel filter up here haven't painted that one today i thought i'd just leave that it matches that red anyway so it's all good then we've got the engine head now normally i always do performance parts but the color did not work properly even with the quality of life mod it went chromey like that drive shaft in there earlier so i've kept the original engine head and just painted it that body match color there looking pretty awesome definitely blends in with the block a lot more liking that one a lot more than i did the performance parts one pretty sweet exhaust manifold in you go you're in a black so is the rest of the exhaust so that all makes sense and then the intake manifold in a body color on there just to separate them up just a little bit i think it looks pretty sweet quite pleased with that let's move on now before we go any further i've got all of these to get in so we've got valve push rods going in and then we've also got the rocker arms to go in there as well 12 of them all together two per piston so i'll get them done and i'll be back in just a second there we go that's all them in and not much left to go now we've got the engine head cover on you go just done that one in a black i thought the red might have been just a little bit too much for the top of that one on we go there but there is some more red to go don't worry the carburetor you are in a red there looking pretty sweet and then the air filter base and cover both in the red just to finish it off with a few splashes of red on the top i think that looks pretty sweet we still got some spark plugs to go let's just quickly throw these in and then the ignition wires on top of that on we go quickly i did forget about these i'm not gonna lie there we go that's all them in and then a red ignition wires just to really finish that one off and i think that is looking pretty awesome i'm very pleased with this motor here today never played with this one before i don't think and definitely worth it even without the quality of life color mod most of that can be painted anyway so that's pretty awesome quite pleased with that i'm gonna grab some pictures we'll get it dropped in we'll take a look at it hopefully it'll look good and then we'll get this one outside in the sun definitely very pleased with that motor that looks absolutely insane so proud of that one body colored black and red but let's get it dropped in and see how good it looks against the body of our little jeep over we go in we go hopefully this is gonna look good we shall see okay there's quite a bit of red sticking out the top there and as you go further in yes that engine block looks great in there body matched with the red details a little bit of black on there not too much red not too in your face loving that i think that looks awesome very pleased let's get it up in the air we've got the gearbox starter and the last drive shaft to go in before we get the wheels done no window tinting today we don't need it for that one windshield let's go gearbox in you go you are in a black because it works really well and i couldn't match the body color to it overly well because well it was difficult in with the starter you are in the body color you've got a bit of black in there separating you up so you look pretty good we'll throw the front exhaust section back in just to get that all finished off looking a pretty sweet then we've got the drive shaft in you go in that metallic y chromey body color slightly different but both drive shafts match even though this one doesn't connect but we use our imagination because it is four wheel drive there we go that is looking great i'm gonna get some wheels done get the liquids topped up and we'll get this one outside in the sun looking absolutely incredible this is a beautiful looking jeep excellent work by Payne. here we are then all finished with the Payne's jurassic park jeep wrangler absolutely loved this one this has been so much fun to do really enjoyed it and i love jurassic park and that engine i think it looks i just i'm really pleased with this one i think it looks absolutely incredible color matched really well thank you french toast for the color codes there um and yeah it just looks beautiful that engine came out so well the suspension very black but with a few splashes of body color and a bit of red on there as well just to really finish it off really make it look pretty sweet i yeah i cannot get over this looks absolutely fantastic we will talk some more about it soon let's jump into these rims though i kept them exactly as they were this is the rim at 33 i even repaired all four and just bought new tires it is that easy keep them in red keep them as they are they are 15 inch rims 225 width and a 75 profile they fit it perfectly there is no need to change them you could put bigger wheels on them bigger rims smaller profile tires things like that but it just works as it is so we're leaving it as it is because it does look absolutely incredible this one has been great let's jump inside and let's check out this interior obviously we know we've got the lanyard that matches the body of this one and i sort of tried to get the seats to match that interior brown a little bit not perfectly 
but beautiful. It looks fantastic in here. Really loving this one. Let's get it started up and see what that i6 sounds like. Pretty much like some of the i4s, maybe a little bit more tick over grumble on there. Not too bad. Let's give it some gas. Still sounds pretty good on the gas though, but let's head over to the dyno and see what horsepower this Jeep Wrangler's got today. Here we are then on the dyno with the Jurassic Park guest transport Jeep Wrangler and its i6 engine with 181 of factory horsepower. How much have we added today with the performance parts? <laughs> um, not a lot. Uh, a gain of 31 horsepower, 17%. Now, I know I didn't pit the performance part engine head on, but I was expecting better than that. Wow, I didn't, yeah, wasn't quite prepared for that. 211 horsepower. There isn't much to say about this one. Let's just go and check out the gearbox tuning setup for this one today. Obviously, I could have pit the V8 in the Jeep if I wanted to, but I chose not to. But here's the gearbox tuning setup we're going for. I've added two extra gears, gone from a three-speed to a five-speed, even with that 287 at the top end. I don't quite know what to expect from this one, so let's just head over to the track and let's find out. Here we are then at the speed track with a Jeep 18 from Jurassic Park, restored to its former glory, ready to take some guests in and around to see some dinosaurs again. But let's see how fast we can get it from this end of the runway to that end of the runway. Let's jump in and let's go. Let's find out. I'll be happy if I beat 210 kilometers an hour because that is the slowest car we've had on the channel with the Land Rover Defender. Hopefully we can get there and beat it. I'd like to beat it by a little bit at least, but let's see where we can end up. Come on, that little Jeep Wrangler. You can do it. Obviously not built for going in a straight line like this. Mostly built for off-road and outrunning dinosaurs. Let's go. Come on, 210. We can beat you easy. There we go. That's fine. At least it's not going to be the slowest car we've done here. But where will we end up with our little Wrangler? Let's keep going. 230. We can get 230, surely. Come on, there it is. Can we get up to 240? I don't think so. We're coming towards the end. Where are we going to finish off? 7, 8, 238. That definitely ticked over to 238. Flat on our roof. Perfectly. That doesn't happen. 238 kilometers an hour from the Jurassic Park Jeep Wrangler. 238 kilometers an hour from the Jurassic Park Jeep Wrangler. Jeep number 18. Pretty good. It does put it 147th on the speederboard out of 152. I'm just glad it wasn't the slowest car we've ever done on this channel. Plus, it looks absolutely incredible. I could have slammed a V8 in there and made it a lot faster, but not what I wanted to go for. Plus, that engine looks absolutely incredible. We're very pleased with this one. Once again, I did say at the beginning, but if you do want this Jeep yourself, there literally is only one way to get it. That is to head over to patreon.com forward slash deadbob777 and subscribe at the Garage Monkey level. That will give you access to this beautiful Jeep Wrangler, a lovely fire truck and a little go-kart as well to have some fun of. We will be showing the fire truck a little bit later on in a few episodes time, maybe, uh, but I don't have the go-kart, sadly. So I can't show you that one, but if you do want it, Garage Monkey level, which is £5 a month, not sure in dollars and that's patreon.com forward slash deadbob777 link will be in the description along with the link to this license plate pack there awesome let's crack on so let's get some facts and figures about this beautiful jeep wrangler if you stuck around for long enough at the beginning you would have saw that i paid at six thousand one hundred and seventy eight for this little jeep it was in pretty bad condition, but we've since spent another 34,844 getting this one to look where it does right now. With all the suspension painted, all the engine painted, even a black exhaust running out through there. Rims, painted seats as well to try and best match the interior the best we could there. Not quite did it, but our total spend is 41,000 and at 22. The real question is, can we make a profit from this Jeep Wrangler? Let's jump in. Let's find out. This is the Jurassic Park guest transport. Now with 240,000 kilometers, 267 on there, quite a lot. Uh, we did get it from the junkyard. It is now 100% finished. And we did squeeze just the tiniest little 31 extra horsepower out of this. Although that doesn't make sense, does it? 17%. That doesn't add up. I don't understand how that works. It's not 31. It's bang on 30. Maybe it's 30.5. Never mind. Anyway, 17% power increase wasn't the best, but we could have slapped a V8 in there if we wanted to. Can we make a profit, though? That's close. Only just 42,723 is the sale value for our Wrangler. Take away our 
41,022 that we spent on it. Leaves us with a profit of 1,701. Profit still profit though. Off you go, Jeep Wrangler. One more look actually, because this was this is beautiful. I'm going to do another one of these. I probably will slap a V8 in it just to see how fast we can make it go for funsies. But this was awesome. I've really loved this. But it is time to say goodbye. Off you go, Wrangler. You were a lot of fun and a tiny, tiny little bit of profit. Once again, patreon.com at slash deadbob777 if you want to grab that one for yourself. But what have we got up next? It is another new mod. We'll talk more about this one in the next episode. This is the Brucknell Moonhawk. Don't know if I said that correctly. Don't really care. I've never even heard of it before, but it looks pretty sweet. This is the Lowrider edition. Uh, is a lot lower than the other editions. You can see the rear wheels are tucked in under that wheel where they're looking awesome. Did we get a good deal? No, <laughs> not even close. 8,839 is what I paid for it, and I could only sell it for 6,651, losing out on 2,188, which is never a good start. But what, what motor have we got in this one? Let's have a look. Okay, it's got the V8 overhead valve SS engine in it. Now, I don't do that engine very often, so we might stick with that one. But we do have a few swap options. One of these two are my favorite for coloring. But with the uh, quality of life mod, we don't necessarily need that so much anymore. So we could pit whatever engine we want in there. We may stick with the SS. If you've got any ideas, something you'd like to see me slam in there, do let me know in the comments below. But that is it for today's video. That's awesome. I cannot wait to do that one. But that Jurassic Park Jeep was even better. That's it for today, though. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy today's video, do consider clicking that subscribe button, helping me out. Helping all the fans of this channel out as well. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of today's build. Any future builds you've got a suggestion for. I'd love to hear from you as well. And don't forget to come and join us on Discord for the Discord competition. We are currently working on the gollies in this and the skyline. It's a beautiful one. Make your own config. Do whatever you want with it. Paint it a ludicrous colour if you really want to. But get it entered. And if you don't fancy entering, just come along. A link in the description below and vote for whoever your favourite is. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.